Welcome, I'm Black Bright and welcome to my channel. You can like, subscribe and share. And for my subscribers, thank you for your support. Um, if you have any comments, you're welcome to put them below. And please, no cursing, because I'll have to disable you if you do. So no cursing, no bad language, just respectful. It's a respectful platform, so treat it as such. Um, apart from that, I wanted to talk about the new powers that Pretty Patel has brought out on Sunday. You know, um, she's now increased the powers to police who can now go out and stop and search in the whole of the 42 counties. And it's ironic that this power has been unleashed just, a, just about a week away from carnivals all over the UK. We've got Leeds, we have, we have the Notting Hill, we have carnivals, Bradford, we have carnivals all over the place. So it's ironic the stop and search has been um, authorised so quickly. Um, yes, we've had some more stabbings, but the thing is, is that the stop and search doesn't stop the, the stabbings. That's the irony of it. Apparently, uh, all their trials that they've done, it's only been 2% effective stop and search. And that's because, you know, how do you, people are going to stab somebody it's either planned, it's or it's impetuous, or you know, it's not like people. Well, I don't know if people are walking around with knives, but I believe that those kids that are stabbing, they've actually got a plan of action, and they just go out and do it. the The, t the police wouldn't have time to stop and search people for knives. If anything, if they do find knives, it's probably on those poor sods that are, are so afraid that they're going to be stabbed that they're carrying a knife on them. But I bet you the majority of them, if they do um, have uh, if they do have weapons and hope they don't. I mean to be honest, it would be great if they stop the if they stop uh, if it stops people carrying knives. It would be great. But I just think that these people will hide the knives. They're not going to be walking around with them. And, you know, whenever they see their target, they just go from the hiding place and um, do what they what they intended to do in the first place. So I'm not quite sure that this is going to be effective, but I do know it's going to cause problems. It's going to be, it's already got a history of discrimination and racial profiling. And it's, you know, I think the recent figures is that it's 11 um, black people to one white person that get stopped and searched. And usually they don't even find anything on them. So it, it's, it's unsettling when you, when you have reports done and trials done, each of them saying that it is not effective. Even the chief of police has said there are different ways to um, deal with this situation. But oh no. Because, like I said, it's under a different guise. I believe they're working with Operation Nexus. I believe the stop and search is supposed to be random. They can literally stop and search anyone for no reason. No reason at all. And the thing is, is that you stop and search, you have a little attitude, you're carted off. And that's really what they want. So, it's not good news for um, people of colour brown and black is not good news at all but anyway i'm going to read out um, the article and then i'm going to put the link below um, even though it's all been all over the news so you probably know about it already but at least it's recorded somewhere um, a stop and search pilot has today been effective immediately to all 43 forces in england and wales and it was a pilot the pilot hasn't even finished yet that is the joke. The pilot hasn't been finished yet and it hasn't been reviewed, nothing. And yet they're rushing this through. And I'm telling you, I bet you your bottom dollar it's got to do with the carnival. Anyway, um, on Sunday, the 11th of August, Home Secretary Priti Patel empowered more than 8,000 police officers to authorise enhanced stop and search powers as part of the government efforts to crack down on violent crime. The sources WW 
www.gov.uk, my favourite website. The Home Office is making it simpler for all forces in England and Wales to use Section 60 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act, which empowers officers to stop and search anyone in a designated area without needing reasonable grounds for suspicion if serious violence is anticipated. I mean, how do they know that serious violence is anticipated? Ordinarily, what the protocol was, it's called go wisely. You're supposed to have grounds. You're supposed to tell them. You're supposed to tell the civilian what object they're looking for. You're supposed to um, show them the warrant, your ID card and your identity, IS, the station that you're from, E. I forget what E is for, L, I forget what L is for. Oh, the law, the legislation, whether it's Offensive Weapons Act and you, why they're stopping you. So there's a whole protocol that they they are meant to follow. And what this has done is that it's just thrown all of that out of the window. What's sad is that Bedfordshire Police are really, really good. And that they've had a relationship with... Um, with this guy called Montel Nouveau, uh, who runs, who trains the police up and works with them to, to, to do stop and search and to make sure it's being done effectively to improve relationships with civilians. There's training, there's, you know, the community are involved, the police get together, everybody's working together. And he's worked on this project for, you know, a few years. And this is just throwing it all out of the window, which is a shame because um, Bedford was considered one of the highest. And I hope that because of this, it doesn't change their attitude, you know, to stop and search. And I hope that they still behave the same way they have been. There's always dodgy cops everywhere, but by and large, you know, had good relationships with the police in Bedford, Bedfordshire, I should say. But anyway, um, the nation pilot has been extended from a smaller pilot within the seven forces worst affected by knife crime following an urgent review commissioned by the Prime Minister. Home Secretary, Secretary Priti Patel said, we are experiencing a knife crime epidemic and I'm determined to put a stop to it. Police chiefs are clear, stop and search is a vital tool in combat betting the scourge of serious violence and keeping our people safe. That's what they want people to believe. You know, people hear stabbing, stabbing, they think, oh yeah, stop and search, that's the answer. It's not the answer. Any, if you Google any search about trialing stop and search or results of stop and search or evidence of stop and search, you will find that it is not effective. So I don't know what all this is. Like I said, you know, there's always an ulterior motive behind these, these laws and legislations that they come out with. And they think everybody's stupid, but, the, the, you know, there's a lot of people who are gullible, who take the news and who take media for what it, for what it isn't. You know, they just believe that media reporting is accurate, 100% accurate. But it, it, sometimes it takes things out of context. So you have to use a little bit of, you know, whatever you call it. I can't even think the word. Sometimes the words um, go out of my head. But the fact of the matter is you can't, you do have to do your own research and examine and not jump onto the bandwagon and believe that everything you hear and everything you see is what it is. Because sometimes, even though it looks like a tree, it ain't a tree. That's a silly analogy, but hey. <laughs> That just came out. Anyway, today I'm giving them, oh, this is Pretty Patel, not me. Today I'm giving them my full support and moral police authority to approve stop and searches to halt this terrible crime in its tracks. Police have no idea what to look for. Oh, this is me. The police have no idea what to look for. What does a stabber look like? What does a potential victim look like? That's just it. I think... They have a stereotype of what somebody who looks, who's going to stab somebody, who looks like. And you notice a lot of guys who do the stabbing, they probably wear, 
a, use a certain uniform, in quotes, deliberately to throw people off their track, to throw the police off their tracks. Because it's always with the hoodie or, you know, the baggy jeans. When you see their pictures, their photographs, that's always how they always seem to be dressed in that way. And that becomes a stereotype. So any kid with a hoodie and jeans is targeted. I really wish they'd change this bloody fashion. It's driving me up the wall. Because the kids, they look so, oh. Even when I look at them sometimes, I think, oh my God, why do you come out like that? Why do you behave like that? You know, they're innocent, really. The majority of them are innocent. Wandering aimlessly down the road, you know, doing whatever they're doing. And every time I see a black boy, I say, please, God, let him get home safely. You know, and it's it's horrible to think that way. But I saw a black boy walking through the park and he had a little wax sack on his back and he had a nice work shirt on and black trousers and he had a nice little neat haircut. And I was thinking to myself, he looks like such a decent boy. But the police don't know the difference. Maybe I can misjudge, but the police haven't got a clue. You know, I'm not saying black people can identify black people, but they're more likely to have a little sense of what is um, what is um, somebody who could be up to mischief than somebody who's not. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm talking out of my... I won't even say what I was going to say. Um, anyway, let's look at this. The authority to stop and search people in appropriate circumstances is a necessary power that allows police officers to tackle violence in our communities and prevent people from becoming victims of crime. And we know that's in conjunction with Nexus, like I said before. The, X, the S60, which is section 60, which is means that they don't have any reason to stop you, is they can stop you on the bus, they can stop you on the train, and they can stop you on foot anywhere, even while you're driving, although that's not called um, stop and search, that's the Motor Traffic Act. But, you know, they could technically do that. Um, the government will also announce plans to shortly publish a draft guidance on measures in Offensive Weapon Act that relates to the sale and delivery of corrosive products and knives and knife, pre pre knife crime prevention orders. I think that's to do with people throwing acid in people's faces and I think people are really screwed up. I tell you, this country, not only this country, the circumstances in this country the poverty, the anger, the frustration, and I think um, augmented or compounded by the violence and everything else and the boredom and the resentment and people growing up in homes that are not happy, all of those kind of elements contribute to um, knife crime, I believe. It's not just people going out and picking up a knife and stabbing somebody. There has to be something behind it. The, and the thing is, this is a recently new phenomenon. And I believe, you know, the more the media repeat it, the more it triggers in people's heads. It's like, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, knife crime, knife crime, knife crime. People are not even thinking about knife crime, start thinking about knife crime. Every time I see a knife in the kitchen, you know, I think, oh my God, you know, is there a maniac around here someone, somewhere? You just don't know. But it's kind of, it's thrown in your mind every time you turn on the bloody TV. And it's, it's almost like mind conditioning. And like I said in a previous video, boys that might not even be thinking about it will start thinking, oh my God, you know, knife crime is so bad, I better take a knife. I better protect myself or try to. It's a vicious circle. This will pave the way for new criminal offences that will help to stop knives and dangerous acids making their way onto our streets, including preventing delivery to our under 18s of knives bought online and making it illegal to sell and deliver corrosive products to under 18s. I mean, how are they going to know these shop sellers who's under 18 they can just i think all you've got to do a little box comes up are you are over are you over 18 you click yes 
and they send you the product. So what does that mean? You know, that's not going to prove anything. I know I've done that. You know, I've clicked on something, I think it was aspirin or something, and they asked me to click whether I was over 18. I clicked it. It's not like they ask you to show you any proof or any ID. They don't do that. So I don't see how, um, if kids are going to buy things online, I think a trigger would be if somebody wants to buy one knife instead of, you know, like a set of table knives or something like that. You know, like, you know, the salad knives and stuff like that. Somebody starts buying all those big old machetes and stuff. I mean, that should trigger something, a warning. KCPOs are civil orders. That's the knife, what was it? Knife crime prevention orders, in brackets, KCPOs are civil orders which can be imposed by court on any person aged 12 or over to prevent vulnerable individuals from becoming involved in knife crime. So now they've got our kids 12 years and older, just 12, and they can be caught in this fray. Our Offensive Weapons Act will give police extra powers and take dangerous weapons out of the criminal's hands, while knife crime prevention orders will act as a deterrent to those at risk of becoming involved in knife crime. Stop and search is proved to be discriminatory, political grandstanding. Yeah, you know, people drawing attention. You know, sometimes it's just about people trying to get into politics, trying to get, gain some favour on people who don't really know what's going on. They're going to jump on it and say, yeah, it's a brilliant idea. But I'll tell you something, the money could be much better spent getting to the root of the problem, which is poverty, no jobs, you know, mental health. That's the root of the problem. These, these kids... The, they're loopy. They're not normal. To be clear from the outset, stop and search does not effectively reduce serious youth violence. It simply enables the police to aggressively control public space and discriminate against ethnic minorities. It can damage the relationships between the communities affected and the police. I can't remember where I got that from. Mm. Anyway, the Section 60 pilot launched by then by the then Home Office Sajid Javid, has not finished, nor undergone an independent review. Okay, it's not finished, nor undergone an independent review. So it is clear that measures are being implemented that are unfair, ineffective and reactionary. Disproportionate use of stop and search perpetuates racial discrimination and class discrimination. It, it, Black boys are 11 times more likely to be stopped and searched than white boys. Research published by the College of Policing in 2017 stated that there was only a limited evidence that stop and search tactic had a meaning, meaningful deterrent effect of crime. And that's what I mean. This is the College of Policing saying this. Limited evidence. And you know if it's limited evidence, it's hardly any evidence at all. For them to acknowledge that it's limited, you know there's no evidence at all to prove that it's a, it's a deterrent for crime. They know this and they don't care. And once again, they are funneling stacks of cash to target ethnic minorities. A chief constable told The Guardian that there are so many areas where we could improve the life chances of people rather than arresting them and putting them into a conveyor belt on the, on the criminal justice system, which often leads to them becoming harder and harsher criminals. And that's the Chief Constable saying that to the Guardian. At Stopwatch, oh, that's where I got it from, Stopwatch. I'm going to put the link at the bottom. At Stopwatch, we know all too well that the impact of disproportionate stop and search, particularly on those with black and brown skin. The knife crime epidemic, you know, the phrase, is thrust upon us and is being used to justify stop and search. The figures are the figures, the figures according to the Home Office statistics between April 2017 and March 2018 a mere 2% of stop and searches 
carried out under Section 60 actually led to an arrest for an offensive weapon. 2%. This is pitiful, especially when compared with the 14% 14 of stop and searches carried out under Section 1 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984 that led to an arrest for an offensive weapon. What this means is that when officers conduct a search with reasonable grounds, they are more likely to uncover a weapon. Yet ministers push for the least effective use of the power to be used more. The 14% stop and search carried out under section one of the police criminal. Anyway, suffice it to say, it's not effective. It's a ruse, as far as I'm concerned, to cause havoc at the carnival and all the different carnivals. Can you imagine everybody being stopped and searched and the police running riot and the police knowing that they can stop and search at whim? Can you imagine how gleeful they are to have that power? I just hope we've got some conscious policemen around to monitor the bad police and who will say, look, this isn't right, because we need more of them. There are plenty of them, but sometimes they're, they're afraid to speak up, you know, it affects their promotion, it affects all kinds of things. And there's a lot of bullying and intimidation in the police force. You know, it's not like, you know, you can just go and speak up. But I think in any government institution, you know, whistle whistleblowing is a serious thing. And it, it seems to, the repercussions don't seem to favour well on the person who's on the whistleblower. So sometimes people don't want to speak up when they see things that are not right. Even though they know that their people, you know, their colleagues are doing things in an unfavourable and unjust way. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Bye-bye.